Hello, weaklings. You're listening to Podcrashed. The podcast that can be a bit of a train wreck, but we won't hold that against them. Every week they sit down with a guest to talk about life, liberty, the pursuit of all things random that I allow them to. You better enjoy the show. Blaming Toby for stuff. Cat ass. <laughs> it's that cat ass. <laughs> that cat ass. Aw, <laughs> oh, he's lovely. Okay, well, I guess we should say, we should say, welcome back welcome, to another welcome. episode. We don't welcome people enough. Welcome in. <laughs> welcome in Zoo Pod Crashed. Right? That, I don't know, sorry, a Zoo? Is that two? The. Welcome the pot crashed? No. I don't know. I just don't ask me. I don't know. I don't know. Welcome to the cabaret. Yeah. Welcome. Like Bienvenue. Yeah. That's all I know. <laughs> <laughs> all my German comes from cabaret. Yep. I didn't take German, so I don't know. No, I neither. Uh, yeah. So this episode, I thought I would torture Anna with talking about a new obsession of mine. Uh huh. Dungeons and Dragons. Dun dun dun. Dungeons and Dragons. Dungeons and Dragons. Dandy. 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 Yep. RPGs. <laughs> Role playing games. Tabletop. Mm-hmm. Role tabletop. Playing I keep games. seeing more and more tabletop places though. Mm-hmm. Like, and they're essentially just facilities where you go and you can rent a space. Yeah. Like a tabletop. There are a lot of games. tabletop games right now that are taking yeah. off. Um, card games like Magic the Gathering or mm-hmm. a lot of uh, Pokemon's making a comeback. Yep. Yeah. Dungeons and Dragons. Dungeons and Dragons is making a comeback. Making a comeback. People are, well, a lot more like YouTube shows and stuff are dedicated yeah. to like mm-hmm. watching people sit around and play Dungeons and Dragons. Right. Which mm-hmm. is fun if you get the right amount yeah. of people. The right well, people. it's no more or less uh, in- interesting or boring than people watching people play video games. Yeah, that exactly. Mm-hmm. If you want to watch other people do things you don't have the skill to, that's fine. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Um, what have you thought, always thought about Dungeons and Dragons, or when... Yeah, newbie, what do you... Um, yeah. well... What is the outside When someone says Dungeons and Dragons, what comes to your mind? <laughs> yeah. Well, I think of, um, the 70s, because mm-hmm. that's kind of when it became popular. Yep. And it was, like, always quote-unquote nerd culture. It was mm. one of those many things that has developed to more of a mainstream that used to be considered something nerds did. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I've always had an appreciation for it because it's 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 imagination. It's essentially you're creating stories, right? You're mm-hmm, creating, yeah. you're continuing a storyline. Yep. So it's kind of similar to like going around a circle and just adding on to a story or mm-hmm. whatever. But you're doing it with characters. Um, but I currently, I I, I I think of it because I um, watched um, Harmon Quest a mm-hmm. couple of times um, back when CISO was still a thing. And I always pre- I always thought it was because it was funny and it was comedians and people I liked and stuff. But they would animate it to go mm-hmm. with what they were playing. And I know he used to play it on his podcast. They would do like a regular podcast and then he would bring up uh, his friend Spencer and they would play D&D. Yep. Um, so I can appreciate it. I've never had the inclination to be part of it, but I can appreciate it. Mm-hmm. You don't have any want to or to like try it or um, anything? I just think because I, the kind of creativity I have is very, sing- like it is a very singular, like I've never had, the, I don't have a lot of urge to create things with other people. So the idea of, building a story with other people isn't something that appeals to me personally yeah you have to if you're not the dm you have to well, just go with it yeah I really like you're not really creating a story though like i feel like I, i'm surprised like i feel like you would be good at it okay. because contrary to what people think it's not all just going through dungeons killing monsters killing dragons and whatnot. yeah i have to you say can... i've never at alma at, at playing a couple of times i've never encountered a dungeon or a dragon okay yeah i have but <laughs> It was a dragon in a dungeon. It was. Um, But there's, it's, 
you're you take on the role of this character and mm-hmm. you find your way through the world and yeah. you can make it um it doesn't have to be like kind of medieval it can be there's um modern ones mm-hmm. there's uh like Star Wars themed, uh-huh. Old West, any kind of theme you can think of, you can make a Dungeons and Dragons yeah. quote unquote story mm-hmm. line out of that. And you don't always have to like fight and kill something. You can talk your way out of things uh-huh. basically because you just roll dice basically to see if you succeed or fail. Right. And so if you can talk your way out of something, mm-hmm. you can just do that the entire game. But isn't there a lot of, infor- it's a lot of information you have to keep straight, correct? Well, you generally have like a character card that you okay. fill out ahead mm-hmm. of time. Because I always have trouble with games where there's a lot of rules and things to think about. Because you... I can't focus on that many things at once. As a player, you don't have to know as much as like the, the dungeon master, the DM, mm-hmm. controls the environment. They uh-huh. know essentially what they want to happen and how that's going to happen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're the person in charge of essentially what, what's going on in your world. Uh-huh. So as long as you can keep your own stuff straight, they mm-hmm. usually deal mm-hmm. with everything else. Like, okay, I have a sword. This tells me. You yeah. have everything written down. So okay. it's like, okay, this I have this sword does this damage Mm -hmm. that's all you need to know okay pretty much and then the dungeon master is the one like no that you miss or you hit Mm -hmm. or whatever this is all determined through the roll of the dice right which is how many sides there's multiples yeah so there's a 20 sided die which is the main one which you roll to find out if you do things yeah if you succeed or fail whatnot and then there's multiple different types of like damage quote-unquote damage dice Mm -hmm. so if you have a sword and you I keep hitting that bottle. <laughs> if you She's very passionate. She's talking with her hands. Yeah, if you slash someone with a sword, it deals, like, you have to roll a regular six-sided dice. Mm-hmm. Or if it's a better weapon, you roll a ten-sided dice or okay. a twelve-sided dice. Mm-hmm. Okay. But if it's a little weapon, you roll a four-sided dice. Are you reliant upon your other teammates to succeed? Not really, because, I mean, if you're powerful enough or, like, okay. sneaky enough, you yeah. yourself can, like, decimate yeah. Generally, something or deal with something. Generally, you try to get... Um, someone representing a little bit of every aspect on a team Uh so if you have a warrior you also have like a mage or somebody that maybe if that warrior gets you know their head chopped off that mage has a spell that they might be able to roll to get your health back up okay so it's like sort of like video game in that way like if you've ever played rpg video games yeah where you kind of want to have someone in your party that might do something different than you so yeah each kind of thing has their own strengths so like you can go about things and try and do it your own way but typically mm-hmm. it's like you have the whole party because everyone brings something else to the yeah and table. it's not it doesn't <laughs> i've played a couple of games where you don't even really have to fight uh-huh. mm-hmm. a lot of it is going into a town and talking to somebody or like exploring around like i i've mm-hmm. i've done a couple of sessions where you we never did anything really we just kind of walked around a town and went into a bar and uh-huh. <laughs> it was and you still have fun because you're generally it's a it's an excuse to get together with mm-hmm. a group of people that you share a common interest in uh-huh. basically it's like a card game or anything mm-hmm. else you're right. just using this as an excuse to see people and be social and right. generally like you can control the players can control what happens uh-huh. so if they see a fight breaking out you can decide as a group or just as a person like no i'm not interested in going over there i'm gonna go over here uh-huh. yeah. and they have to like you, it, that's what happens. Okay. Or yeah. if you're talking to someone, if you want to just randomly punch them in the face, right? You mm-hmm. can. Yeah. Or if you want to seduce them, or like make them your ally. There's endless like yeah, okay. opportunities and like options on what you can do. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it's essentially as open a world as the DM wants to make it because they're mm-hmm. in charge of sort of crafting the world ahead okay. of time. So they kind of know what it looks like and where you can go and what you can do. Uh-huh. And um, they create all that from scratch? Yeah, and they build all that. It usually takes them a couple of, at least a month. Uh-huh. Which, there's like previously made ones. Yeah, you but... can look up. There's a lot of guides uh-huh. and stuff, mm-hmm. which I think is why it got popular in the 70s. I want to say like 74 or something was think, the first Yeah, 74 dungeon guide. was when it was created. Yeah. 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 Um, that you, but I, I also know people that just kind of do whatever yeah. i have a friend mm-hmm. right now morgan who's working on a candy land version version where everything okay. is edible candy? and can- made cool. of candy <laughs> so you can just but choose I mean, like, to eat things yeah but like <laughs> but you have to be like instead of being like you have to be like a like a sugar plum fairy as opposed uh-huh. to like <laughs> or like instead of an orc you're like a giant candy cane i don't know i was talking with her briefly but it didn't make any that's sense that's pretty funny though but, but yeah you can like, just kind of go with whatever like, you can take your favorite tv show you know your favorite yeah. movie and create 
just take that world and create, have everyone create a character and put everyone. Yeah, you can be Jeff in that community, world. right? And just exist. <laughs> and you're like, well, I have high charisma, so I'm going to talk my way out of this, mm-hmm. right? Or Westworld, or Game of Thrones, mm-hmm. or zombies, or something. Star Wars I think zombies. That's yeah. Why people like it so much and why it's caught on so much is that it's it. You can kind of make it into whatever you want to make it into. Mm-hmm. It can you make you can make it as simple or as elaborate as you want. There's mm-hmm. people that have like props and everything on the table and little buildings. You, you can dress up figures. if you want. Yeah, you can dress up or you can just sit plainly and just have dice and a piece of paper in front of you. Uh huh. Okay. Which is nice. But um, I looked up some of the uh, misconceptions and myths okay. of Dungeons and Dragons, which I'm sure like kind of everyone has thought or heard. Yeah. Because, like, me, when I, at least younger, like, when I thought of Dungeons and Dragons, yeah, I thought of, like, nerdy Mm -hmm. dudes playing it. Yeah. And, yeah, that's a, the main, like, misconception is that it's only for socially inept white virgin males. (laughs) (laughs) But, like, the reality is that maybe now, because it's caught on more, like Mm -hmm. Jeannie's been saying, is that, like, a lot of women play it, too. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, like, adults, We become a lot more open as a society with, and maybe it's because we live in a culture of, like, um, constantly trying to, like, uh, reminisce about our childhood and, like, bring Mm -hmm. back stuff that we liked when we were younger, that it's much more open to be, like, uh, a creative adult to like you know what I mean like mm-hmm. to, yeah it's more encouraged to be to nowadays. use your imagination and I just be like well you're an adult so you need to stop that unless you like are a writer you can't really yeah. fantasize mm-hmm. or do any of that kind of stuff so I think we're we're more accepting of that kind of thing now it's mm-hmm. become okay uh the next one is that uh people think like the player and the character are the same thing mm-hmm. so like the player is like me personally uh-huh where I'm whatever play whatever role I'm taking on I'm it's not the same thing Mm -hmm. where I'm a nice ish person I could have a totally murderous callous horrible character but Mm -hmm. it's still not can I make myself the character you could yeah you can you can just make a like like me in my how I would actually make decisions in my real life yeah yeah but in whatever if you want to do it whatever I like it I like it Mm because I I used to do like theater and community theater and school Mm -hmm. stuff and it kind of like yeah you can essentially make up your own character Uh Mm -hmm. and if you're like well I'm I'm an evil warlock, so I'm going to be chaotic evil through this whole thing, Uh which that gives me the opportunity to just do random mean stuff to people. Mm -hmm. Right? (laughs) Stuff you weren't normally do or think of. And then that's going to, but that's going to play off in a realistic way to April's, like, good. If I have a paladin. Yeah. Like a holy warrior. Yeah. Or like, yeah, like someone who's lawful is going to, we're going to. Clash. Clash. Mm -hmm. And that's going to create drama. Right. But yeah, you can you can just straight up be you. You yeah. can literally be like my character is Anna. <laughs> I'm a librarian. I don't know why I'm with this group. They yeah. pulled me along. <laughs> I found a book that transported me back to the Middle Ages. Yeah. Yeah, you can say that coming yeah. in too. You can essentially around. be like, I woke up here and I don't know what's happening, so we're gonna go. And You're over in the corner talking about movies and everyone's mm-hmm. like, Why are you talking about As long as it ends with me making my millions when I go back to modern day because I invented the computer or something. <laughs> Yeah, you're going to roll to invent yeah. computer. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> invent the internet. Haha, ha, take that, Al Gore. Hide some, hide some gold in the cave where only you know where yeah. it is. Yeah, depending on who you're playing wrote, with, you can get as weird as you want. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. I stole the, I wrote uh, the Star Wars franchise t- uh, two years before George Lucas thought yeah. it up. Yeah. He stole it from me. <laughs> yeah. Um, another one is that there's uh, a misconception is that there are winners and losers. So, well, so like how most, life works, <laughs> <laughs> life or like board games, usually like there's, you move a certain number of squares, yeah. you first one there mm-hmm. wins uh-huh. with, um, any kind of RPG game, Dungeons and Dragons. It's about the journey. Um, it's about the journey or yeah, Not there's, the destination. there's no clear winner mm-hmm. or loser. How do you decide when a game is over then? Or is it never over? Usually like there's a, an arc for the campaign, kind of like a story. So uh-huh. There, once you get to the end, so you're like that you could, set a goal, like f- to discover this or to end to up defeat here. this person yeah. or okay. to solve this problem, whatever. And then it can just end. You can just stop getting together. You get to Oregon, or... and whoever's left on the party didn't die of dysentery along yeah. the way. So. They, I would do a, I would do a <laughs> Oregon Trail, Oregon Oregon trail. session. <laughs> yeah, uh, but like more often than not, um, if you get to a certain character character level, yeah. then you can just like scrap the campaign and you start mm-hmm. over again with new characters and a mm-hmm. new uh, adventure path and whatnot. Right. 
So yeah. or you can keep that. that character and just yeah. go through different, different scenarios stories. with mm-hmm. the character. Oh, well, can yeah. it be like a Highlander scenario where I time travel with this character? Yeah, yeah. I just take my mm-hmm. my character. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Definitely. So um, there's that. Uh, there's the thought that. Dungeon D and D teaches people how to cast spells oh. because there's magic users, but D and D I know how to cast spells. Yeah. Man. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like there's, I don't know what they're really talking about because yeah, they they used to like they had a whole campaign about how it was uh, Satanism. Satanism and yeah. stuff. I always think it's fun. funny when like things like that or like when Harry Potter came out and there was all these religious people who are like it's Satanism, it's teaching mm-hmm. witchcraft, and I'm like. He's clearly Jesus. I don't know what you're talking yeah, about. Like, yeah. Well, it's like, it's like, are you implying that you think there actually is legitimate ma- magic in the form of witchcraft and wizardry that you, th- like, as an actual thing? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not saying there isn't some sort of harmonious something, but the ability to, like, yeah. cast spells Wingardium on people is, is legitimate. Yeah, like, <laughs> is, but then again, I guess if you're, like, really hardcore into the magic of the Bible, you think magic is just a thing that happens all the time. I think, yeah, I got magic right an, there. He's turning water into you're wine. You're anti-science, so therefore anything that science explains is magic. So, like, magnets, magic. Because I don't mm-hmm. know how they work, and science yeah. is not going to tell me how they work. They're not mm-hmm. in the Bible. It's the devil's work. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no magnets in the Bible. Oh, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, that RPG's uh, D&D glorifies violence, where I've said this before, where you don't have – there's – a term that I've kind of just recently heard call, called murder hobo, where okay. it's a playing style where someone, the characters, go around and whatever you come across, you just kill. Okay. That thing has treasure. Kill it. Yeah. That person, I don't like that person. Kill him. Yeah. This person is trying to arrest me. Kill him. Mm-hmm. But there's, you don't, that's not the only play style. Like, you can talk your way out of situation. Mm-hmm. You can, like, manipulate things and people and yeah. go about it differently. You can get, if you can convince them. A monster somehow to just hand over their gold or scare yeah. them out of their yeah you have high area. enough uh, charisma points you can pretty much talk a, a dragon into not killing you yeah a schmooze the dragon mm-hmm. yeah so it's not all just violence mm-hmm. well i don't th- i'm always like surprised when like the people talk about like that or like video games being too bad i'm like we let people go paintballing which is shooting people mm-hmm. yeah. or dodgeball where you're literally chucking things at weaker people yeah that's fine to teach kids. That's oh, yeah. why they don't they don't allow that in schools anymore. Oh, thank you can't, God. You can't play I dodgeball. I fucking hate dodgeball. I loved it. No, I didn't like it. It was too aggressive. I mean, sports are, can be aggressive by nature, but the whole point of a game is throwing balls at each other. That's my issue. Mm-hmm. It's one thing if you're trying to throw the ball into a basket to get a point and you happen to be aggressive getting that ball to that basket, mm. but to chuck a ball at other people and you actively seek out the weaker people or the people that don't want to do it. Yeah. And I don't like that as a lifestyle. Well, that's like, more just sucky precedence. bully people. <laughs> no, but like when you're playing the game, you're like, well, I'm playing to win, so therefore I'm going to see. It's like a human, it's a human nature, but I don't like setting that precedence for young kids. That's what I'm saying. Anyway. Well, if, if anything, this is, you can't win. This. Yes. Yeah, this, you, so, since you can't win, you don't have to take people. Yeah. There's not, at least I haven't run to anyone who's real competitive at yeah. D&D. But comp- There'd be I'm no real com- point to I'm it. Com- but I'm part I, of the competitive <laughs> D&D. Uh, yeah. Take it Circuit. really seriously. Mm-hmm. We go to D and D competitions. I know, I know they do like large scale competitions, but I'm not really sure how those work. If it's do one, do they battle each other? Yeah, if it's one overall plot scheme, they do, like, or video if it's game just individual like uh, plays in order to gain up points for a like a big thing. Or right. I, I don't know how those work. I've never been to a well. I mean, you tournament. can you can like die. So mm-hmm. yeah, depending on what situation, and if you die, you lose. That's true. Kind of, so. Unless your next game is heaven. There or the go. afterlife. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and you're trying to. You can roll to see if you come back as a zombie, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> you roll and they're like, well, you got into heaven. You can't technically get into heaven, but you have to find a way to coax yeah. Peter at the gate to letting you in. So yeah. you can use yeah. your charisma to talk your way into heaven. <laughs> you can do that. You can <laughs> yeah. role play that. Go totally. Yeah. Or hope that your party lugs your body around yeah. and yeah. eventually, like. Honestly, I like think you're whole... someone's plus one when they get to heaven. Yeah. Yeah. I'll just hang out till someone's got an extra ticket and I'll just jump in. I honestly think the whole like math and like dice aspect of it was just to stop people arguing. Oh yeah, because oh, they yeah. Could, it was like yeah. a logical way of making the decision. Like, I oh, no, hit this will you, tell no, us. you didn't. Yeah, I, I did damage. I have a really cool sword. You do not. Uh huh. And you're like, okay, mm-hmm. fine. My swords were seven now. 
Yeah. And that's I wonder if you could, that. like, if you were, like, a writer, for example, say you wrote, and you wanted to write a fantasy novel, if you just did it D&D style, where you, like, I had oh, actually, I'm sure. Roll, I've been, like, debating that and, like, trying to do that. roll a dice to, like, determine where the next part in your story goes, like, kind of, like, a choose-your-own-adventure, but mm-hmm. you let the dice choose it for you. I'm sure that I've, those exist. I've yeah. debated that, yeah. There's actually, well, I've actually come across stories that are just D&D stories. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Where the, the, it's a whole, like, They had so much fun, like, we got to write D&D. this down. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah, if you play, like, online, usually there, it's, uh, the transcript usually gets published somewhere. Yeah. Mm. There are various forums where, like, this is a completed transcript of this, so this is the story it tells. Mm. Yeah, and you can squabble amongst each other, too. Yeah. Mm. Learning that with, I'm playing with Wes and Liz and John mm-hmm. and our friend TJ. Mm-hmm. And TJ is an instigator, and he's taken to picking on John. <laughs> his kid, the, the 10-year-old John, child, you mean? Yeah, he's... Picking because the adult man is picking on the ten year old child. Because Jonathan's character is always kind of lipping off, or um, it's right there, he's kind of like John's like picking fights nope. with. Uh, ooh, ooh. Uh-oh. now it's angry. Now it's angry. It's coming back for vengeance. Sorry, it's a stink bug. Stink bug. Stink bug. It's stink season. But it's stank season. Uh, like. What was I saying? Like, he'll, the, John kind of instigates it, but, um, yeah, TJ's character, he, on a whim, he just took John, like, said he grabbed John's character and just threw him into a room with goblins. Uh-huh. And John got captured. Aww. <laughs> so we had to go save him. <laughs> but you can do, you can just, like, sabotage your whole party. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But then it's fun, because it's... You take out your, uh, aggression on issues stuff. with yeah. people yeah. in the game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've, I've, I had, I, went, I played once at Adrian College with a group of people, and the one guy I didn't like, so I just shot him in the face with an arrow <laughs> on my, like, first turn and killed him. <laughs> really pissed that guy off. Right? <laughs> Sorry. Seriously? I think his name was, like, Brand. Yeah. He was just a douche, and I was like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to shoot Brandon in the face with an arrow. What do I roll? Oh, yeah, you successfully murdered him. I'm like, cool. <laughs> <laughs> Did not like me. Well, shouldn't be a shouldn't be a douche, right? <laughs> That's your, awesome. Your preconceived yeah. notions of people from outside of the game take over. Yeah, mm-hmm. well, he's, like, I was the only girl there that particular time, and he was not. I don't know if he wasn't comfortable and just like oh, being yeah. an asshole because of that, mm-hmm. but he did not want me there. Yeah. It's like, what like, are we? Twelve? Oh. Leave me mm-hmm. the fuck alone. Yeah. You're a newbie, so he doesn't want to slow down for you or something. Yeah. yeah. Uh, other con- misconceptions are that uh, D&D creates criminals and promotes suicide and obsessive behavior, where those aren't, I looked those up, it's not linked, where any kind of crime mm-hmm. where they blame, like, it's because... Has there the, been a crime, like, crimes where they blame D&D? Or they have, yeah, games? where it's like, oh, a, a game taught the child to murder their parents. Oh, it's or, like, like, the person no, shot me in the face with an arrow during the game, so I murdered them afterwards. And yeah. <laughs> okay. I mean, if I get killed, it's probably Brandon. Yeah. <laughs> that might be more for it. Uh-huh. Or that, like, suicide people who play, like, are so distraught over losing a, their character that uh-huh. they commit suicide. And that's, like, there's well, that's other circumstances mm-hmm. that, like, add to that. It's not yeah. just the game. But headlines, you know, what sells more hi- headlines? Depressed teen takes mm-hmm. life or... Yeah. Let's talk about mental illness versus D&D causes suicide. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, yeah and then that uh, D&D is only for kids, which is not true. A bunch of adults play. Yeah. I don't... It says 13 and... Play besides John. It says yeah. 8 and older. <laughs> older. Is that plus mm-hmm. on the, the side of the box? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, plus? I don't know many kid, younger kids now that play mm. actually play. It's well, more... they would play probably like an online version. You know what I mean? Like oh, there's yeah. Like the yeah, you definitely see RPGs shades of it in other RPGs a lot yeah. of the time. Mm-hmm. Well, like Skyrim. Um, mm-hmm. Or World of mm-hmm. Warcraft, which I don't know if that's yeah. still a big thing, but it was a really big thing for it a is. while. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. That's still going, yeah. Mm-hmm. For your character. Um, and then uh, I was going to go over the myths about D&D. Where myths. The, we kind of mentioned it already, where it was a thought that D&D was created by a Satanist. Uh-huh. Yeah. Which isn't true. <laughs> but um, I think that came, comes mainly because um, so in the monster guides, there's demons, there's devils, 
and whatnot, and so people can think like, oh, they're there to teach, you know, tell kids what ones you can worship and control, but they're always thought of as opponents rather than Mm -hmm. allies. Mm -hmm. You certainly could become an ally with them, but... Yeah. You um, can play Satan. Nobody's really going to care. Yeah. Um, And let's see, there's a thought that the Dungeon Master Manual... um, contains a procedure for selling your soul to the devil, mm-hmm. which I don't know where that myth came from. Yeah, you have to believe that the devil is a f- actual D&D player mm-hmm. person and like... Instead of chess, yeah. you, you D&D for yeah. your soul. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or, uh, you know, instead of a fiddle contest. Yeah. Roll the dice. I feel if that <laughs> were true, there would be a lot more successful dungeon matchers. Yeah. Like, like all of our popular yeah. <laughs> musicians and actors would all have been dungeon masters at some point mm-hmm. who yeah. sold their soul. Yeah. Yeah. Donald Trump would have been a dungeon master. Oh. Yeah. That's the only way I could think to I'd be surprised if he could read a dice. <laughs> I don't think he knows how to count. The dice is wrong. Mm-hmm. Roll it again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um... Uh, let's see, uh, people, there's the myth that because people play it, they'll act it out. Uh-huh. So, I mean, kind of like kids where they see something, Well, that's they... LARPing. LARPing, LARPing, yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But that's la- not like actual, like, let's go and murder people. It's more like, let's go in to the forest and dress like woodland creatures and pretend a knife. Smack each other with, with each other. styrofoam yeah. knives. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's more like Ren fair. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then murder. And steampunk, <laughs> yeah. all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, they think people have thought that like Dungeons and Dragons would um, teach kids or get kids to act out the roles of being like arsons, torturers, rapists, mm-hmm. stuff like that. And that stuff's not really condoned in the game anyway. Right. I mean, not many people want to play a horribly dark, you know, yeah. Yeah. demonic, any, depressing game. If people utilizing it as, an, as a scapegoat for something they already wanted to do. Mm-hmm. Like, people blaming heavy metal music for, like, school shooters. Yeah. yeah. It's like, mm-hmm. no, they were school shooters that just happened to listen to heavy metal or utilize that as, an exca- as a scapegoat even mm-hmm. though they were going to do it regardless. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Uh, let's see. Uh, the D and D manual contains false gods for the players to idolize and worship. I can find false gods on my own, thank you. Yeah, yeah. right. Well, while there while there are um, gods and stuff, it's the characters that you play don't have to worship anything. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They they're there, so then you can get like an extra boon or like just so if you want to play a religious character, you can. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You can be a Jehovah's Witness, mm-hmm. basically, and go around spreading the word of. Jehovah. 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 Or just God or whatever. You're like, I have witnessed. Mm-hmm. Witness this. Mm-hmm. Or Michael Witness Jackson. Witness me. Whatever you want to do. And yeah. the spray, huff spray paint. <laughs> huff spray paint. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, the manuals contain graphically violent rules for combat, which they don't. Mm-hmm. This all sounds like it's issues like parents would have had in like 1960. I think, yeah, yeah. pretty much like, it is. Like, oh, it's violence for our kids nowadays. They'd be like... Yeah, like, yeah. we got real violence in the world that they're fo- that they can find. Mm-hmm. Like, we don't need. Yeah, it's all people that are like, oh yeah, kiss stands for knights and Satan, Satan service. service. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's the same same. At the, and now it's mm-hmm. a point where they're like, oh, they're reading and creating. Like they don't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now it's more accepted. Where it, back when it came out, it was, yeah. was more for mm-hmm. the seventies or eighties. Yeah. Um. Uh. Blah blah blah. The manual describes Adolf Hitler as a heroic character. Is that an which isn't really true, where um, I've read one of the manuals, and they use him as an example for charisma. Uh-huh. We're like, oh, if you, like, well, Adolf he Hitler, he, has, he was very char- charismatic. I think he got an entire, he... you know, <clears throat> group of country to follow him. <clears throat> well, mm-hmm. not everybody, yeah. but a lot of people. So they were using that for, like, oh, he's not very beautiful, so people don't fawn over him, but he's mm-hmm. very charismatic. Yeah. So it's like your character that you pick can be mm-hmm. horribly mutilated but still be very charismatic. Do you think if he would have grown out that mustache a little bit, it would have been a little bit more attractive? Because it kind of... Sh- that was the in-vogue mustache of the time because Charlie Chaplin have it, had true. it and he wanted to Didn't it, look wasn't like it, a I Hollywood it was, star. I thought he used to have like a big mustache, but then he trimmed it to just that little thing yeah, so it could fit have, inside the, yeah. mus- the, ga- the gas mask. Oh no! It was it was a fashion statement because it was real popular at the time. Oh. Had a tiny little and that, much like the name Adolf. He then after him, it was yeah, kind of it like, ruined it for everybody. Yeah. <laughs> don't, don't do it. If your last name's Hitler, let's just change it mm-hmm. to Hiller. By the way, if you meet people named Hiller, there's a good chance they changed it from Hitler. Yeah, Hiller. 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 <laughs> 
Uh, and then finally, the last myth that I kind of found was that D&D encourages kids to hide out in storm tunnels and sewage systems <laughs> and act out the game. Yeah. And, and get killed by clowns from space? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like that episode of Punky Brewster that taught me to hide out in abandoned fridges and yeah. in dumpsters. Yeah areas yeah <laughs> fight rats and goblins and look for treasure everywhere yeah that sounds mm-hmm. fun if anything taught me to go underground it was the goonies so i don't know yeah <laughs> right under mm-hmm. you know an old abandoned pirate treasure yeah because there's a pirate there's an entire pirate ship in a cove on the side of oregon that no one's ever found yeah it's only a thin layer of rock that they yeah. between the cove and the yeah it breaks and they see the outside so it's like yeah no one's ever found that it's literally on the beach mm-hmm. how is someone just like not tossed a rock yeah. And, like, the whole wall comes yeah. down. Yeah, you didn't have to down. go through the whole tunnel. They could have mm-hmm. just gone to the beach and, like, gone that way. Yeah. 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 Do you know there's supposed to be, in the original cut, there was a supposed to be an octopus in there. Oh, yeah, I heard. But then I was like, what was the octopus hanging out guarding the ship in, in the cove <gasps> yeah, what of was or, he or eating? <laughs> yeah, what is he eating? Ha ha. Ah. Uh-huh. Life finds a way. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, there's plenty of other examples, bad examples for kids to do shit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's funny to blame it on one particular thing. Mm-hmm. It's, yeah, it was mainly just like the blame game. What can you yeah. blame yeah. on? Well, if parents don't want to blame themselves or their own genetics, they got to blame something. Yeah. It mm-hmm. wasn't the fact that I, I was uber religious, constantly telling my child that they were sinning and giving them like bleach baths that made them <laughs> a psychopath. It was the D&D that they yeah. claimed. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. I never had a conversation with my child, but I assume it was that the yeah. thing that they were doing. Yeah, I compl- I took all my frustrations with my uh, shortcomings in life and all the things I didn't succeed, and somehow they turned into an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew? Who'd have thunk it? Must have been l- l- larping. Mm-hmm. I just like the term larp. 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 There's a group of kids on campus where they larp. Larp. We'll see them dressed up and with foam swords smacking each other. Mm-hmm. All right. You're not hurting anybody, so. Someone, I think one of the custodial workers, like, called us for about them. They're like, there's kids fighting in the parking lot. We go out there, like, no, they're. You're like, are they in medieval paraphernalia? Yeah, then they're just LARPing. They're fine. Yeah. They're what now? They're fine. <laughs> they're, worshiping, they're worshiping Satan. Yeah. Leave them alone. We're not a religious affiliate university, yeah, so let them do it. <laughs> they're in the church parking lot. The, the best we can do. Yeah, at least I'm not <laughs> in the church. <laughs> yeah. Yes. But okay. well, yeah. I have to reevaluate my views on this, I guess. Mm-hmm. I like the idea of just being a regular person in like just various <laughs> period situations or like in, various situations you just yeah. end up with a group like, that like, goes like around our, our, it's like it's like my my you know includes um you know the elfin princess and the goblin warrior and Steve. <laughs> <laughs> and Steve's just like a dude with khakis like, "Hey, what's up, guys?" Yeah. Steve has the power of the cell phone, and he can call 911. <laughs> but they decided not to come, because mm-hmm. it's not their jurisdiction. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's 1232 yeah. AD. Yeah. Could be, uh, you could just take um, the Ash character from Army of Darkness. There you go. You can just play a, as Ash. And he has a chainsaw hand. <laughs> Try yeah. to make an insurance claim for your broken shield or something. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, your, our insurance policy doesn't cover goblins. Yeah. <laughs> Active goblin. Active goblins. <laughs> Active goblin. <laughs> yeah, it covers uh, if you're bombarded by pixies, but not active goblin. Damn it. Yeah. I knew I should have taken out the goblin policy. Yeah. I would recommend to uh, first timers who aren't, who have never done a D and D session before, uh, find a really easy going group. Mm-hmm. Oh. Um, you'll know like when you get there if someone's dressed in armor. Maybe find a different group. Uh, <laughs> they're all in shorts and t-shirts yeah. that what i would be yeah. worried is be going into a group mm-hmm. and they're like su- super into it so like because that's the hesitation i have about group games is that if someone's like doesn't think you're doing it right or them being actively aggressive or angry at you because you're not making the right decisions mm-hmm. uh, you know what i mean or like being like oh you somehow you're letting everyone down yeah. because you're not it's oh. like any other game so it, it's literally all, all about the people you play with yeah if, if you have fun with that group of people when you're not doing anything you'll have fun during D. yeah mm-hmm. i'll play if you can get danielle and justin to play i bet i could get them to play if we can do a game night here where it's just everybody local based and we, you can you can be the uh, game master okay and we'll have to do a setting that they'll all be interested in what setting do you think everyone would be interested in a um, farm <laughs> farm <laughs> farm 
Um, I don't know. You could do like a, like a Westworld. Like oh, we could do like a zombie apocalypse. A zombie, zombie apocalypse, apocalypse would be good. I think Danielle would like that because she could be a badass. Uh-huh. Okay. And you could be like, oh, no, we're being attacked. And she could be like, I got this. And like roll to see if she could destroy all the zombies by herself. <laughs> uh-huh. She see, could be a leader. See, what's also fun is Like that a Walking Dead scenario. Walking Dead. Okay. What's also fun is that where there's, you roll to see if you succeed, but there's also critical failures. Uh-huh. Where if you roll a one, that means that either something horribly goes wrong for you while you're trying to do something, or like you fall over. Uh-huh. So I literally um, <laughs> something goes horribly wrong when you fall. Over. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean it's bad for that because like you have to use a turn to just stand up. Yeah, which is bullshit. <laughs> but and you got, and you stood up. Okay, next yeah. person. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But like. Uh, well, John was playing, and he's a rogue, so he has this magical dagger, uh-huh. and he went to throw it at probably a goblin, and he rolled a one, so instead of just saying, oh, no, you Poked missed, or eye. something, no, he, Elizabeth was, it, Elizabeth's character was in his way. Oh, no. Kind of a bit, so instead Stamp of throwing it mother. over uh-huh. his shoulder, he threw it into her left butt cheek. <laughs> <laughs> and then the dagger's magical, so it, it, it embeds in her butt and then rips back out of her butt and back into his hand so yeah i think i like with Teaching all this i feel daggers. like everyone would have fun with it yeah 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 we've well, all done like plays and stuff so oh I yeah yeah, yeah. We're all creative fun. enough because yeah that's role everyone thinks role playing is just like or D role playing games is just that game but when you act when you mm-hmm. improv that's mm-hmm. role playing also yeah right it's perfect for it all right. Essentially, you like to like improv weird moments. We'll, we'll have to set one up and we'll have to record it and see how it goes. We will <laughs> challenge accepted. Challenge accepted. <laughs> All right. Go well or horribly we'll wrong. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Like critical injury. Yeah. <laughs> like an actual legitimate someone mm-hmm. hurt somebody else. Mm-hmm. Start it well, but then Danielle threw a dagger at my yeah. head. Like a li- yeah. <laughs> All Put an Danielle. actual dagger at my head. Yeah. Turns uh, out we all summon Satan. Take <laughs> on my face. But then we have to go on a series of, of funny, uh, fun, wacky adventures to try to get Satan back down to hell. Yeah. Oh, there's mm. your, there's a D and D plot. Oh, there you People go. People playing D and D accidentally summon Satan. Satan, and then they've got to figure out how to get Satan back. Yeah. You summon Satan and begin the apocalypse. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But you've got, but you've got good twenty four hours before people really start to notice the apocalypse. So you got some time. Oh, I would say more like a couple of days in this it's environment. It's like the beginning, <laughs> like the beginning of Shaun of the Dead, where he's like walking around and something's off, but he didn't really notice it because he's focused mm-hmm. on making sure his girlfriend's not mad at him. You know. Mm-hmm. So. Anyway. We're still super early, so I guess we can switch <laughs> topics if you really want to. How many? How are? How long are we? Uh, we're only at like thirty six minutes. Oh, yeah. Or we can just cut it short since a shorty. It's an April so. episode. <laughs> <laughs> it's an April one of April's sucky topics. I can't take the whole thing. Uh, yeah, we can stop. Whatever. Okay. And you start talking about Dungeons and Dragons, the movie. The movie. I haven't seen it though, so I don't. There's I, an actual movie. I think there's like two of them. It's what? not. Is it not based on the game though? Well. I think it's based on things in the game. It's like they took the game and just were like, people like this, let's yeah. get our movie They took that. the term, like, orc or something and just went with it, I think. <laughs> kind of like the World of Warcraft yeah. movie. It had the second second Jimmy Olsen from uh, from uh, Lois and Clark. And Marlon Wayans. Hmm. And Thor Birch. Dungeons and Dragons, 2000. Ooh. And Jeremy Iron. Um, the Emperor of Izmir... Has long been a divided land, the Empire of Izmir. The mage, an elite group of magic users, rule whilst the lower commoners are powerless. Izmir's youngest young empress, Savina, wants e- equality and prosperity for all, but the evil mage, Prof- Profion, is plotting to dispose her this is and why establish it gets a bad rap. his own like rule. This. The empress <laughs> possesses a a uh, scepter which controls Ismer's golden dragons to challenge her rule pro pro <laughs> <laughs> pro 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 must have the, <laughs> the scepter and tricks the council of mages into believing Savina is unfit to hold it knowing that uh, a prophet will bring death and destruction Savina must find the legendary rod of Several and a mythological rod that has the power to control red dragons, a species much mightier than gold. 
Enter two thieves, Ridley and Snails. Oh my god, it's still going. Who <laughs> unwittingly become <laughs> instrumental in Savina's search for the rod. Joined by the feast, the fest, the feisty dwarf Elwood, and That's helped Marlon Wayans, and helped by the Empress's <laughs> expert tracker, the Elf Norda. The young heroes go in search of rod of the rod. Okay, from the deadly maze of the thieves' guild. At a Tunis and the Elven Village, secret grotto and abandoned castles, Ridley and his band must outwit uh, proficiencies, thieves, henchmen, dam- Damodar at every turn. <laughs> While back in Ismer, uh, they prepare to do battle with the Empress, all divided with the rod and the outcome of the race to reach in first... It first is far from certain, and Ismer's very survival hangs in the balance. <laughs> so, that is the plot to Dungeons and Dragons. The a movie. lot of dudes want a lot of phallic symbols. Yep, <laughs> it's got Je- Jeremy Irons plays Profiterol there. I told you. Um, uh, Justin Wallen plays yeah. Ridley. Second Jimmy Olsen. Second Jimmy Olsen, also known from the TV movie Susie Q. If you're mm. familiar, and the nobody is, and the <laughs> third uh, third Child's Play movie. Yeah. Grown up Andy. The grown up Andy. Marlon Wayans is snails. Um, Thora Birch <laughs> is the Empress. And some other white people. <laughs> uh, Norda, I don't know who Kristen Wilson is, but her picture is her playing, like, LARPing, so she must be a. A LARPer? Yeah. She's got you sure she's not just ears. the Unless picture of her from it. the movie? It's got Richard O'Brien in it from. Oh, is. Is it. Zillilius? Zillilius. Hmm. Yeah. Is it animated? Oh, and Tom, or like Tom Baker's act? in it too. Oh, it's hala la la la. No, it's, it's live action. Huh. Yeah, it looks kind of not good. Mm. I remember it coming out, but I don't remember. Yeah. I just remember the previews. Well, the world was uh, uh, really weird before 2001. <laughs> <laughs> it was a pre 9 11 world, so we were just. We were okay with just this kind of it. Yeah. It's a really awkward scene where the dragon necks over two towers. Um, when asked why he did the movie Jeremy Irons replied are you kidding I had just bought a castle and I had to pay for it somehow (laughs) (laughs) Uh, all right right, well go watch D&D the movie (laughs) tell tell us how it is (laughs) yeah (laughs) okay well we can stop I guess any final thoughts you're Um, up for it you've played you'd be up for it it. yeah You'll have to come join us as well. Okay. We're relying on you to come up with the story, though, April. Oh, I will. Okay. That's the great thing, is you just let the dungeon master do everything, and yeah. then you yeah. just show up. You just show up. Just you don't need to know up. anything. Yeah. Sometimes you bring a bag of chips. Yep. That's about it. <laughs> yep. A couple drinks. Mm-hmm. Bring the dip. Mm-hmm. All right. Sounds yeah. good. Yeah. All right. So hopefully maybe look forward to that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Until then. Daka bitches. Daka bitches. Thanks for listening to Podcrashed. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Podcrash Podcast. You can also check out our website at www.podcrash.wordpress.com. Email us at podcrashed at gmail.com. We promise to answer your questions. Theme song is by Creo. New episodes come out on Tuesdays. And as always, donka bitches.